Fighting game characters come in all different shapes, sizes, and styles, from Karate Man oh. to Blonde Karate Man. Let's turn up the heat. To wait, isn't this the first one again? I am of course kidding, because we all love the Karate Men, and in fact there is a wide variety among the characters in fighting games. However, no matter how different those fighting game characters may be, the vast majority of them play the same way, hitting their opponents with punches, kicks, and special moves until the opponent's life bar is empty. But not so the remarkable standout fighters in this video who have totally unique mechanics, moves, and playstyles that mean they fight like nobody else. Enjoy! The Guilty Gear series of fighting games includes rock and roll witches, vampires, and psychotic surgeons with paper bags over their heads, so it takes a special effort to stand out as an unusual character against such stiff competition. Jacko Valentine from Guilty Gear Xrd is such a character, not because of her style, although the catsuit, ball and chain, and pumpkin mask are eye catching, but rather because of her fighting style. <laughs> Jacko can do regular attacks with her iron pumpkin flail, but where she is unique is in the minions that she's able to summon. She's able to put down what are known as white pumpkin houses, which can summon one of three kinds of minions. One with a spear that can do combos, one that can fly and do aerial attacks, and one with a staff that can do anti-air attacks. These minions advance and level up automatically, and if you can buy enough time, a stack of leveled up houses will decimate Jacko's opponents with ruthless efficiency. Or to put it another way, Jacko players are essentially playing a tower defense game while everyone else is playing a one on one beat em up. As you can imagine, fighting someone who is playing a game in a completely different genre can make them hard to deal with. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, she can also kick you from space hard enough that it basically detonates the entire continent you're on. Hardly seems fair. Injustice 2 is a fighting game in which everyone is super-powered, and therefore capable of surviving stuff like this. Then along came Injustice 2 DLC, which added into the mix new characters, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael. And if you're wondering which of the turtles you get to play as, the answer is yes. I run a delivery service. For pain. That's because the turtles, while they count as one character, are actually four distinct characters. Before the match, using the Injustice 2 gear system, players equip one of four accessories representing the four turtles' signature weapons – swords, bow staff, nunchaku, or size. Depending on their choice, players will then be controlling Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, or Raphael, each with their own unique movesets, character powers, and special moves. As such, players going up against the Ninja Turtles have to be ready to deal with one of four completely different fighting styles, which is an issue even for superpowered demigods like Darkseid. You make Bebop look good. You will suffer, fool. Of course, the Turtles are a team, and so they don't go solo the whole time, as you'll discover if you end up on the receiving end of one of their super moves. Shell shot! Which is painful to watch, but not nearly as painful to watch as this egregious waste of pizza. Pepperoni. In its ongoing effort to include every video game character in history in its roster, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate recently added Steve from Minecraft as a playable character, which came as a surprise to anyone who's actually played Minecraft and knows that Steve usually fights like this. But Steve, along with his counterpart Alex, is one of the most unusual fighters in Smash history, which is saying something from a series that includes Mr. Game & Watch. True to his original roots, Steve's strategy when fighting is based around mining. 
Mining lets Steve mine materials from directly out of the stage, which he can use at his crafting table to create stronger weapons for battering his enemies. Mining also allows Steve to place blocks, which he can use to build temporary walls or platforms to stand on, letting him reconfigure the stage to his advantage, which can be massively frustrating to play against when you have an opponent who knows what they're doing. In keeping with the mining theme, Steve can also summon minecarts to slam into his foes and use TNT to blow them up. Which is fine in the context of a normal match, but takes a sinister turn in his final smash, in which he imprisons his opponent in a Minecraft house full of TNT and creepers, and then makes lingering eye contact with the camera while eating a steak as the house detonates behind him. Don't mess with Steve, is what I'm saying. The man whose Grand Slam won it in the night, yeah! Junpei Iori! Yeah! First off, I'd like to congratulate your team on winning the WBC! Thank you very much. When you see a fighting game character with a baseball bat, you'd be forgiven for making assumptions about how they fight against their opponents. They hit them with the baseball bat, right? Well, while that is true of Persona 4 Arena Ultimax character Junpei Yori, it's also a little more complicated than that. Junpei is a baseball player, as you may have gathered from the bat and the outfit and the title of the Mighty Strikeout Slugger, and as such, a lot of his power and abilities comes from the baseball scorecard you can see at the bottom of the screen next to his SP gauge. Every successful hit Junpei lands on an opponent or projectile he reflects back with his bat counts as a single or a runner on base, and more runners added move the current runner's forward one. When the runners start to get home, he adds a run to his scorecard which increases the amount of damage Junpei does per hit. This is turning into a very uh, yeah. battle. Once Junpei hits 10 runs, he automatically activates a special ability called Victory Cry, which lasts until the end of the match and gives him a boost in attack, defense, and slowly regenerates his HP. Junpei also needs to make sure his hits connect because whiffing with his bat counts as a strike, and if he does it three times he gets an out, and three outs will completely reset all of his meters apart from runs. Which sounds complicated, sure, but then so is baseball, so that tracks. Oh, this macho glory! Perfect swing! Get the hell off me! My is basically me chewing on your skull. Go for broke. Marvel vs. Capcom games pit the superhumanly powerful metahumans of the Marvel Comics universe against pretty much any old rando who's ever been in a Capcom game, which, as you can imagine, does lead to some mismatches in power level. <laughs> Good luck, 14-year-old Tronbon. As such, the developers over at Capcom have to come up with some interesting ways to explain why some of their basic human characters are able to step to, for example, someone with adamantium-coated bone claws. Most notable in the Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 roster is plucky lawyer Phoenix Wright, who has no combat skills to speak of, but is able to damage opponents by sneezing, hitting them with discarded evidence, and getting his assistant Maya to trip them up. Maya? Actually playing as Phoenix, though, a big part of your game revolves around switching into investigation mode and collecting evidence that you'll find lying around the stage, like a knife, an autopsy report, or a cell phone. I have more danger! More evidence! You can also pick up false evidence that you'll need to discard to make way for real evidence as well, but it's worth it, as it's all in service of building your level 3 hyper combo, which does the highest amount of damage of literally any hyper combo in the game. It's time to pay for your crimes! Take this! Another unusual fighter in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is Dead Rising's Frank West, who is a bit more adept at handling himself in a fight than old Nick, but whose main marketable skill is photography. This is reflected in the way he plays, and that Frank can level himself up by taking photographs of his opponent. Ooh, that's a good one. Taking pictures with his camera boosts Frank's level through a fight, giving him access to new moves, new weapons, and new super combos, completely changing the way the character plays as he snaps more picks. Don't go! That said, you might want to think twice before having him on your team, as he does seem to attract zombies. Whoa, I'm gonna need you guys to scram. Even in space! How is that even possible? <laughs> that 
Tatsunoku vs. Capcom Ultimate All-Stars could be considered a version of Marvel vs. Capcom more specifically accessible to a Japanese audience, as it pits stars from Capcom's games against characters from various anime series produced by Tatsunoku Production, none of whom, I'll be totally honest here, I have ever heard of. In standard matches, players form a tag team of two players to take into battle, letting you form ultimate dream teams like Ryu from Street Fighter and Ken the Eagle from Science Ninja Team Gatchaman. Finally. However, the game also included a couple of giant characters who were so massive that they weren't allowed to have a partner, and because one of them was from the almost entirely forgotten Capcom game Lost Planet, I'll be focusing on the other one, Gold Lightan, an enormous golden cigarette lighter robot. Gold Lightan is nearly the height of the entire screen, and as such, it can be hard to try and hit enemies that are roughly one sixth of your size. He's also pretty slow, but makes up for it by being, you know, a giant robot made out of solid metal, which helps in the power stakes. See, this is why none of the other characters in Street Fighter are giant gold robots. Throws the balance off. The Tekken roster is full of highly trained martial artists, sophisticated combat droids, and bears, so it was something of a surprise to discover unlockable character Dr. Beskonovich in Tekken 3, who is a skinny, elderly man whose primary fighting techniques involve repeatedly falling over and shuffling around on his butt. In Tekken lore, Dr. B is a genius who has developed ballistic missiles, built a giant Russian android, and recreated his dead daughter as a robot with chainsaws for arms and an exploding head. I mean, may as well add some improvements if you're going to be making a new one, right? But in terms of actually fighting, Dr. B is unlike anyone else in the game in that his fighting style, described as panic fighting, consists almost entirely of him falling over and flailing around hoping that a stray limb will brush against his opponent and do some damage. On the plus side though, that can make it very hard to figure out what Dr. B is going to do next, and his hits aren't significantly weaker than anyone else's, meaning he can still deal a ton of damage when he wants to. It's just that, usually, he doesn't want to, instead preferring to spend his time lying on his back staring at the ceiling. Probably thinking up new attachments for Daughter version 2.0. Maybe a smoothie maker for an arm, that'd be convenient. You win. <laughs> there you have it, those were the totally unique fighting game characters who don't fight like anyone else. Did we miss your favourite novelty character? How dare we? Get at us about it in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, think about dropping us a like and subscribing for more videos like this every week on the channel. I mean, think about it, and then do it. Thanks, bye!